Do you think that's done? Swung to the boundary. Doesn't matter what time of the day it is to Nathan Astle. Might well be the last over for lunch, but if it's short and wide, it'll go. That's in the air, but it'll only bounce a couple of times before going over the rope at uh, extra cover. Lofted away into the leg side and away for four. It's beaten mid off. I'm sure Nasser Hussain didn't miss time his run at that ball. One of England's better outfielders is still concerned with that uh, finger injury. 154 for three. That's past a cover point. Four more to Assault. In the air, but uh, all the way to the boundary. Typical Nathan Astle shot there to be hit. And he's uh, not shy of putting back to ball. Yeah. Four more here. So three boundaries in the over. Plus a two, it's an expensive one. 189 for three. Well done, Flintoff gets his man. A little bit of seam movement back at Fleming. And uh, a thin inside edge, it's a good catch by the keeper as well. Credit to him, because they're always difficult when the ball uh, nips back. Well, that's the wicket they wanted. Inside edge and a terrific catch. Good movement, Stephen Fleming, that's the big wicket for England. He's gone for 48, it's 189 for four. Got that through. That's a convincing stroke. Yeah. He's got him fending at that and pushing it away. There's no third man out. I think there should be a third man. If you're going to bowl short like this, then uh, you should have a third man in. Nonetheless, it's uh, Nathan Astle's 50. And it's come up in 54 balls. Well, it's gone down. Don't get much warning there. Well, it would have been one of the great catches, wouldn't it? This will this will be good. Oh, there we are. I mean, he had no chance, really, did he? He would have sensed the ball rather than seeing it. In the air again, but uh, smashed past mid-off for four. That's away for four as well. Or is it six? It's gone straight over the rope for a maximum. Astle so quickly into position there. Gee, what a great example of a hook shot this is. How quickly did he get himself into position? Boom. Look at that. He's hit that flat. That'll bring up the 50 partnership in very fine style indeed. Lofted 20 rows back into the DB stand. Beautifully executed stroke. It's in the air and he's got it. First ball. Craig McMillan's gone for the drive, he's driven it straight back to Andy Kanek. And England on the road to victory. And Andy Kanek holds on. Brought back into the attack. What a good change this is. And I'll bet that's a loose nip. It's a long half volley. Loses his shape completely. Macmillan, easy as that. Easy as that, Andy Caddick back into the attack. He's got four for Mike Millen, 24. New Zealand, 242 for five. Aye, 
That's it. Off stump out the ground. Adam Perore is gone. And that's the 11th time that Andy Caddick has taken five weeks in innings. And it's the seventh time he's done it out of those 11 in the second innings. He's on song today. Bowling for England. Winning the game, a part of it. Nick on. And it's always leg stump, isn't it? Inside edge onto leg stump. Caddick back into the attack. That's another for him. Adam Perori. Brief glimpse of him. 252 for six. For a fairer decision, think Kensington Mortgages. There are moments that captivate our heart. In the vicinity. Well, there's shouts of catch, but uh, that's smashed away. It's quite nicely timed, isn't it? Uh, beautifully timed, in fact. And that is 3,000 test match runs for Nathan Astell. Significant landmark for him. Nicely played again. That flashes away. Seen plenty of boundaries in this match. A match full of incident. Full of runs in the second innings anyway. Bowles had a field day in the first. They've had to work much harder in the second innings as is the game. Just to finish off on that selection, Bob, but to round it off, one ball left in the over. You may see a reaction in the papers too because uh, everyone will be expecting Matthew Sinclair to come back. Might not happen. Four more. Both sides of the wicket, Daniel Vittori. 2.85 for six. He's gone for it. He'll just get his foot. Oh, it's gone straight through Craig White. And up comes Nathan Astle's eighth Test match century. The fumbles continue in the field, but Nathan Astle celebrates. What an entertaining innings it has been. Century coming up in just 114 balls. His third against England, one in each series that he's played. 102 not out at Auckland in 97. 101 at Old Trafford in 1999. And now 101 not out at Christchurch 2002. Well, it's been a wonderful innings. Brilliant, in fact. It's going to be in a lost cause and they perhaps never feel quite as good. And we'll see the reaction from Nathan Astle. He won't believe that uh, Craig White missed this. <laughs> Can't believe his luck. Now, shall we talk about the other aspect of it? Perhaps not. I hope he makes the 11 in Wellington. He might not be the 12th man. Flintoff continues to test the middle of the pitch and continues to go for boundaries. 300 comes up for New Zealand. Well, they're still in there fighting. 250 needed for victory. He's gone. Daniel Vittori caught by Flintoff. And the first wicket in the match for a slow bowler. Flintoff, the catcher, at mid wicket. Trying to drag it away and not getting the timing. That's uh, the value of having a tall man with good hands at mid-wicket. The Tory goes for 12, and New Zealand are 300 for seven. Close. Out. Nod of the head and the vertical finger. Off goes drum, LBW. I think uh, Ahsoka De Silva may have decided no proper stroke was played there drum goes for naught that's another duck in this test match new zealand 301 for eight probably just 
One wicket away now from defeat. Well, I'm not sure Flintoff thought that was that brilliant. Wouldn't be the biggest uh, shout I've ever seen in my life, but it got the desired result. Drum goes for a duck. 301 for eight. Astle's gone after that. He's found the gap again. Yet another boundary for Nathan Astle. Two sixes and 18 fours now. Well, that's what give him the new ball. It'll come off a lot quicker. Nothing to lose. He's going to put seam on at both ends. Five balls doesn't make any difference. That's away past Vaughan for four more. Beautiful timing from uh, Nathan Astle. That's crashed away through the covers for four more. Hassel uh, trading exclusively in boundaries. That's four more. Smashed back down the ground. Cameraman just got out the way. I'll tell you what, he's hit that hard. A big sort of bottom hand punch straight back over the bowler's head. He'll be really enjoying this, Nathan Nassel. I mean, the game's gone, he knows that, there's nothing he can do. And, uh, it's not the worst delivery, but it's a very good shot. Look at the cameraman ducking and diving. I don't blame him. George uh, just got out of the way. And again, 0 4 2 4 4 in this over. It's the way to greet the new ball. And you said uh, it often comes onto the bat nicely on pitches like this. It's going off it pretty well, Ian. Oh, I, don't, I mean, when you're in this situation, it's actually uh, you can have a lot of fun for a short period of time. It's going to be another four, I think. Spiralling away over a backward point for four more. 18 off the over. It's 3-3-3 three, three, three for eight. In edge and gone, Butler's gone. I think England uh, will think they've won the match here. Maybe they don't because uh, Butler's gone. The thinnest of edges through to the keeper. Sixth wicket for Caddick, Butler has gone. Butler's gone for four. It's 3-3-3 three, three, three for nine. And he goes again. That's gone uh, many, many a mile. Way back into the stand. Cairns joins in with a thumping uh, drive down the ground for six. It's uh, beginning to... Uh, be no joke this for Matthew Hoggard. Yep. And that's going to be his 150 with another four. Super timing. This is 25th four. Three sixes, 118 in boundaries out of this 152. Magnificent knock. Strike rate of 111.8. Uh, and great entertainment. The crowd loving it. They've had great entertainment throughout these four days. That's uh, skied away over uh, the slips for six. And that's uh, his highest score in Test match cricket. Well, Andy Caddick can't believe it. That's uh, flown away and hit the boards on the full. It's going to be six more. Could get 12 for that. 
That has gone miles. Well, it's magnificent clean striking. Everybody applauding it. That's a big, big hit. It's down the ground. That uh, I don't think will go for four. I think it will. Not right at the middle of the bat, but uh, races away. 376 for nine. Off goes Astle again. That's flown into the stand again. Six more. Unbelievable hitting from Nathan Astle. David, I don't think I've seen anything like this since uh, Viv Richards took England apart in Antigua. That's exactly right. Just the innings that I was thinking of in comparison. What a wonderful eye, what a wonderful bat. Andy Caddick, England with a new ball. Just gives himself room, keeps his eye on it. Here he comes again. Pulled away again. That's another boundary. This is amazing stuff. It's another six as well. It's all boundaries. It's all fours and sixes. It's the crowd that will need helmets. The ball's disappearing into the crowd time and time again. That's another huge blow. That's out of the stadium as well. Well, 666. Bit of history in the making, David. New balls, please. Stand and deliver. A smile on his face. Look at this, it's a length ball. Gives himself room, fast feet, dances down. That's out of here, on the roof. And this is a big roof. Look at that flow of the bat, look at the power. It's going to be Andrew Flintoff again from the Port Hills end. Astle's on strike. That's another monster blow. This is quite unbelievable. That'll be four. 198. That'll do it. The crowd are on their feet again. Yesterday it was Thorpe. Today it's Nathan Astle. He's broken the record. Unbelievable stuff. Nathan Astle, 200 not out in 153 balls with 27 fours and nine sixes. The entertainer. It's up in the air, and that's six as well. 100 partnership comes up in 54 balls, 55 in fact. 105 required, it's going to be Hoggard again. No wicket for 136 in the commentary box now. Ian Botham and Paul Allett. Well, I didn't think I'd be back here. Half an hour since I finished commentary, still looking for this final wicket. Astle carries on on his merry way. That's another six, 20 rows back. It's his 11th six. Under three figures required now by New Zealand and England may be getting a touch twitchy. Well, they shouldn't be. They shouldn't be. It's a great shot. They should just be bowling, bowling line and length. You know, we went through a phase where we tried to bowl everything in Yorker length. And that's uh, it's just a beautiful strike, believe me. That, that's a fine, fine shot. Slower ball. See, just bowl. Well, I certainly don't want to be bowling too much length. I think uh, the fact that England took the new ball, uh, the bowlers thought, well, it's going to swing and seam a little bit. I have to keep trying, I have to keep pitching it up. He'll miss one, he'll nick one soon. He's not doing, and uh, something is, is needed now. There's, uh, if you're going to bowl Yorkers, they've got to be right up there and they've got to be hitting leg stump. The short ball is always worth a try. 
Edged. Gone. That's the one. England absolutely delighted to have got rid of Nathan Assel. Huggard uh, gets his wicket. What a remarkable test match this has been. Nathan Astle has made uh, 222, the fastest double century ever in the history of the game. He's last man out, and England breathe a huge sigh of relief. An absolute.